all so elated. We are enamored. We are so excited to be amongst you. We thank God for this week, our anniversary week, third year. Three years we've been with New Horizon Baptist Church, and we are so excited. What we're going to do, we want to introduce to you um, the next speaker. I know, how did you enjoy Sunday? Did you enjoy Sunday's message? To God be the glory. Amen. Well, listen, we want to introduce this Friday. We're going to have Pastor Ethan Evans from Grace Baptist Church, I believe it is, Grace Community Church here in, in Trenton, New Jersey. Very good friend of mine. We've been brothers for the last maybe 40-something years. Yes. We've been acquainted. Watch this. We're so close. I sang in his wedding. Amen. I sang in his wedding when he and his wife, Lady Jennifer, uh, got married, did their nuptials. So we're excited to have him come share with us this Friday evening. So saints of God, we want you to tune in. We want you to log on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, yes. you know, and we want you to log on and tell your neighbors, tell your friends, New Horizon Baptist Church is having an anniversary service, third year anniversary service, yes. this Friday at 7 o'clock. Yes, yeah, 7 o'clock. Amen. So first lady, you just want to say hi to the people right fast. Hi, everybody. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Y'all got to forget my wife. She ain't, she, she ain't talking <laughs> loud enough so you can hear, but try it again. Talk loud so they can hear you. Hey, saints, praise the Lord. <laughs> and she gorgeous. I love her so much. Amen. Thank God. We're so excited. This is our yes. third year together, but how many years have we been together? Forty-four years, maybe? We've been going together. Going on 45. Going on 45 years. We've been 35. married 30, going on 35. 35. Woo we you can tell we seasoned veterans. Yeah, Amen. Uh -huh. So once again, New Horizon Baptist Church, we're so excited. We thank God for you. So tune in to third, uh, Friday's message, and allow God to speak to your heart. Amen. Amen. So once again, we thank God for you. We thank God for you celebrating Amen. us, because at That's first good. I didn't want the celebration, but to God be the glory. And we pray that New Horizon is just as excited about this uh, celebration as we are. God Amen. bless you. Look forward to seeing you soon. God bless, bless you. you. We greet you in Jesus' name. To my dear and beloved friends, uh, Pastor Elder Matlock and to Missionary Matlock and to your precious family and to the New Horizon Baptist Church. We send our greetings to each one of you and we celebrate with the Matlock family as they celebrate their third anniversary. And what a blessing it is to celebrate even during this pandemic, even though we're not able to physically get together, but thank God for the venues of uh, Zoom and uh, the other social mediums. We're still able to share the word of the Lord and to impart encouragement to you as you've been so much of an encouragement to all of us. Let me begin by saying we want to thank you and Missionary Matlock and your whole entire family, the Matlock family, your precious boys for their support over the years. You're talking about over 30 plus years and we watched God work in all of our lives, uh, particularly um, uh, Pastor Matlock pre his pastorate ministry. He was a great psalmist in our city, um, serving both at the Grace Cathedral Fellowship Ministries. Bishop Jerome Wilcox was the pastor at the time and still is. And uh, the Matlocks have served them very well and their humble servants, and not only just to uh, Grace Cathedral Church, but also when they transitioned to New Life under Apostle and Lady Branville, they served faithfully, faithfully there. And we just thank God for their service in the body of Christ. And I thank you for your service to my family. Every momentous occasion, any important part within our family's life, you and Mr. Metlock have always been there. And today we want to say thank you. May God bless you. And we pray that uh, something will be said today to encourage your hearts as you go forward in ministry. Let's pray before we get started. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for this time of sharing. Thank you, Lord, for these three years that you blessed the Matlock family to um, hail their anniversary. And we thank you for the New Horizon Church where you united them and this congregation in ministry. We pray, Lord, that um, you would speak to their hearts. We thank you that your word will fall on the hearts of your children and produce fruit in their lives and all of our lives and the fruit that will remain. Bless them, bless their church, bless their family. Bless the branch of Zion where they're called to serve. And we thank you right now for uh, your blessing upon their lives in this new season. And we give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pastor Lady Metlock, as we share the word of the Lord today, I pray that uh, the scripture and the words that are shared will encourage your hearts as you continue forward in ministry. First Corinthians, first chapter, verse 18. And we see what Apostle Paul is sharing as he speaks to the church at Corinth. 
It reads in the 18th verse, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy with the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is this disputer of this world? Have not God made the foolish the wisdom of the world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. And it did not please God by their foolishness, but the foolishness of the gospel to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jew and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. 25th verse says, Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. God bless the reading and the hearers of the word of the Lord. If I could choose for a topic, I would choose the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. As we look at this particular text, we understand that Apostle Paul, as he began the ministry, we know he was a persecutor of Christians. And how God changed his life, he became a proclaimer of the word. And it amazes me how God works in all of our lives, how he transforms us, he transitions us. And I looked at Pastor Matlock's life as a great psalmist in our city and how he proclaimed the word through his singing. But Pastor Matlock, you had the audacity to go into the ministry and God was already using you as a songster, but there was a zeal in your heart that God wanted to use you. And who would have known that over the last three years, pre the three years, God was gonna call you to pastor a congregation. I wanna commend Horizon Baptist Church for your, your committedness and your, your stick to itness to seek forth a vessel and God chose the Matlock family. They are partners in the ministry together. Ever since I've known them, they've worked together, they and their boys as a family. And how richly are you blessed to have such a, a great leadership before you. But as I look at uh, uh, Apostle Paul's writing to the church at Corinth, he dealt with the issue, several, several doctrinal themes, the doctrine of salvation, the doctrine of sanctification, the doctrine of we being redeemed, but here he talks about the preaching of the cross. We can't fully preach the gospel except we deal with the cross factor. And not just the cross factor, but Jesus Christ, as he gave his life as a ransom for many, he was crucified, he was buried, but the victorious part of the message and the gospel is that he got up on the third day with all power in his hands. And as we look at this same power that Jesus Christ was resurrected by, we have that same power to minister to show forth the glory of God. That's why Jesus said in the, 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 the Gospels of St. Matthew, he said, let your light shine, that men will not just only see your works, but that they will in turn glorify the Father, which is in heaven. Pastor Motlock, I just want to focus on three points, and I'll be out of your way. I want to focus on your preaching mantle and mandate, also the power of the gospel, and also the power of prayer and partnership. I want to focus on those three points very briefly. The preaching mantle and your mandate Point number two, the power of this gospel. And point number three, the power of prayer and partnership. Indeed, over the years, God has used you mightily. Indeed, as we look at this scripture here, where Apostle Paul says, the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishnesses, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. We're saved, we're redeemed, we're sanctified, we're declared righteous by the word of God. And through that same zeal and that same power, God has anointed us and he's anointed you to carry out this preaching mantle. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, talks about the fivefold ministry where Apostle Paul says, as he was a prisoner to this, the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, he was bound to it. But he says, walk worthy wherewith in all loneliness, meekness, long-suffering, and in love. 
And indeed, Pastor Matt Locke, you've done that. But a little later down, the 11th verse, he talks about the fivefold ministry, that of the apostle, the teacher, the pastor, the prophet, and, uh, and just looking at your preaching mantle, and we can't forget about the role of the evangelist. You have served in several capacities of ministry, evangelism, now the pastorate, and God has used you and, and stretched your gifting in so many areas, but your preaching mantle, God has anointed you to share good tidings to those who are lost. And I'm pretty sure over the last three years, New Horizon Baptist Church has benefited that whole region. We, the people of God everywhere, have benefited from your preaching mantle, but your mandate is to proclamate the gospel. Think about Paul's ministry when God changed him, Acts the ninth chapter, from a persecutor to a preacher. Look how God has transformed your life, all of our lives, and how we watched each other grow in the ministry, and God has anointed you to preach the gospel. And he's anointed you to proclaim it with zeal and in power through the Holy Spirit. Second Timothy speaks to the preaching mantle. It says, preach the word in season and out of season, reproving, rebuking, exhorting with all long suffering. God has doubly anointed you to encourage. And even in this pandemic, these unprecedented times, God is still using us and anointing us for service. Even though we're on live stream, whether through the medium of Zoom or other social mediums, God is still getting this gospel out. And I pray that God will still anoint you as you are an anointed vessel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I commend you to continue to preach the gospel through this pandemic. Preach the gospel to those who are discouraged. Preach the gospel for those who need hope because God has given you a mandate to go forth in Jesus' name. Now this power of the gospel, point number two, Apostle Paul says this gospel, the gospel of truth, is foolishness to those who are unsaved, who don't believe, but it's the power of God to those who are saved. Thank God we were saved, we were redeemed, we were brought out of darkness into the marvelous light because of this gospel. This same gospel has a, a, a power, this same gospel has anointed us to declare God's truths, and Apostle Paul dealt with another theme here. He talked about the wisdom of man. James, the third chapter says, around the 17th verse, he says, first, wisdom is peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy, and is impartial, partial, and is always sincere. Pastor, you've always demonstrated the wisdom of God, but you've also demonstrated these various qualities, you and your wife, peaceable individuals, gentle, open to reason with people. You are always full of mercy. You're always impartial when it comes to those sharing with you. But the crux of this, of this wisdom that God had given you, it was always sincere. I commend you, Pastor, for being sincere, honest. I commend you for being loving, showing the love of Christ. And I commend you for showing mercy. That's the crux of ministry, showing mercy. For God forgave us for our sins. That's how we were saved. Because the scripture says, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And because of that eternal life and that gift of eternal life, we should be more merciful toward others. Thank you, Pastor, for being giving, merciful, and loving toward others who come within your reach. The definition of wisdom, wisdom, it's pure. As I said, it's peaceable. It's without partiality. It's without hypocrisy. It follows after mercy and is always to be yielded by the individual who gains the wisdom. Wisdom is God's advice concerning how we should live and attend to all of our affairs. James said in the third chapter, he says, count it all joy when you fall into divers of temptation. He says, but at the latter part of that, that, that scripture, it says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let them ask of the Lord. Thank you, pastor. Anytime you were within question about next steps or your life or your ministry, God has always given you grace and you've always asked God for wisdom. Wisdom is more precious than gold. But Proverbs the fourth chapter says in the seventh verse, he says, after you gain wisdom, get understanding. Apostle Paul was trying to encourage the church of Corinth to understand that wisdom had its place. But if you gain any wisdom, you must ask God for it. For wisdom is the principal thing, but it's better 
to get wisdom. The church of Corinth, they were looking at their godly right. The Jews were looking for a sign. They were looking for a Messiah, a majestic king to come. The Gentiles, the unsaved, they were looking for signs, scientific study, the wisdom of man, the human right, the intellectual. They were looking for other means except to go toward God for all things. And as you continue to preach to a generation that's seeking for wisdom in all other places, I pray that God will continue to anoint you, me, and other ministers to direct people directly to God. That's the essence of the ministry, that as we preach Christ, Jesus said, if I be lifted up, he said, I'll do all the drawing of men, women, boys, and girls unto himself. Thank you, Pastor, for lifting up Jesus in your singing ministry, in your preaching ministry, in your prophetic ministry. God has used you in so many venues, and I pray that God will continue to use you and your family to be a light unto the world. Yes, you're an anointed preacher, anointed psalmist, but you're a family man, a man who has been married low for 30 plus years to one wife and you have a beautiful family, God has richly blessed you. That's where ministry starts. It starts in the home. You set the God example, not just at the church, but at home on your job as you've done and have retired. God has used you to be a beacon of light wherever you are. Apostle Paul says with this gospel, it may be foolish to the unsaved. It may be folly, strange, different, not the norm. But first Peter, the second chapter says, we're not of the world. So we're going to be different. We're a peculiar people, a holy nation called forth to declare the glory of God. God has given you a preaching mandate to let people know that Jesus still saves to the gutter, to the uttermost. Wherever you are in life, as I'm sharing this word today, wherever you are as you're watching this venue, God loves you with the everlasting love. And wherever you may be, whatever you may be doing, God has enough grace to stretch his hand and touch you where you are to pull you up out of the muck and mire and to help you to receive his grace today. That's the crux of the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he saved us. He loves us with an everlasting love. He's merciful. He's kind. He's gracious. Why would we serve a God like that who gave his only begotten son in the person of Jesus Christ to die for our sins? Pastor, you have a preaching mantle to proclamate this gospel. Your mandate is to preach throughout all seasons of life. Through this pandemic, preach the word. Post-pandemic, preach the word. As we look at the political display and the upheaval between the Republicans and the Democrats and the Independents, preach the word because people need the unadulterated word of truth. And who has the answer? The Church of God has the answer. The world may be questioning about their todays and their tomorrows, what's gonna happen post-November 2020, but Jesus said, in many instances, if we seek him, he will always deliver. If we seek him, he will take a turn toward us. Uh, uh, Second Chronicles, the seventh chapter, the 14th verse says, if you want to answer about what's going to occur in all of our lives, what's going to change these systems of the world, he said, if my people who are called by my name, if we will humble ourselves and pray, seek his face, turn from our wicked ways, then when we hear from heaven, he'll forgive our sin and he'll heal the land. Our nation has sinned against God. Our communities have sinned against God. Our families may have sinned against God. We have individuals may have sinned against God, but our job is to turn back to him because he's a merciful God and he will forgive us for all unrighteousness. Paul was trying to get the church of Corinth to understand, even though we see a little later throughout the chapters preceding and the chapters thereafter, even though they were a gifted church, they had a lot of business to get in order. And pastor, God has given you a mandate to preach to the, the, the church of God worldwide to help us to get our church, our families, our communities back in alignment with God's perfect will. Because he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. But it's left up to the role of the preacher to preach the unadulterated word of truth. Regardless of these unprecedented times, regardless of this pandemic, which we are very concerned about, but God has given you a prophetic word to reveal to God's people, to let them know that Jesus still saves He's still merciful and he's still loving. Thank you, Pastor, for in your, 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 your preaching manner, you've been very compassionate. Your appeal to preach Jesus, you have been consistent, but your love for the people of God, you've always been in a position to show that Jesus still loves everyone with an everlasting love. And Jesus even told his disciples, he says, without love, men will not know that you're my disciples. 
So we are commissioned to show the love of Christ. Point number three, the power of prayer. Luke 18, chapter verse one. And thank you that you are not only a preacher, a psalmist, but you're a praying man. Luke 18, chapter says, verse one, man ought to always pray and not faint. Thank you that you haven't fainted in your zeal to pray. Because through prayer, we seek God's face. Through prayer, we hear him speak back to us. Through prayer, God changes us and changes situations. And I thank you that you, Pastor, were an answer to prayer. New Horizon, before they selected a pastor in that transition process, I'm pretty sure they had to pray for God to direct them. And look what God has done. Over three years, he selected you, he's appointed you, he's anointed you, and now you're standing at the helm of leadership. And I pray that God will continue to cover you as you go forward in your future. Continue to be that prophetic voice that speaks to every generation. Like the sons of Is Issachar, they knew the signs of the times and they always had a timely word. May God anoint you to always have a timely word for this generation. When there are those who are without hope, may you be the hope and share the hope through God's word. When people are in question on what to do, may you have an answer through the word of God to get them next steps in their lives. When the world is in a disarray, may, people of, may the people of God always turn back to God and may you lead them to them, lead them to God. I pray that the anointing of God will rest upon you. And as you recognize the power of prayer, the effects of prayer, as you recognize that God wants to use you to be a leader in leading the congregation in prayer. Thank God for Sister Matlock because she has always been a praying woman and look at all the great things that God has done because of her prayers. God bless you, First Lady Matlock, for being a vessel of honor and supporting your husband, sitting on the sidelines, sitting right next to him to pray with him, pray for him, that the anointing of God will rest upon his life. And last point, the importance of partnership. The ministry is about partnership. First Corinthians, the 12th chapter talks about uh, the body of Christ, around the 23rd verse, and thereafter, how the body of Christ is many parts, but there's still one body. And uh, Apostle Paul talked about the context of communion, how we're enjoined in the body of Christ because we have communion with God. I pray that you will recognize the continual importance of the body of Christ working together. And as we see the pastoral level, the congregational level, the community level, working hand in hand, what great things will you continue to do in the area and in the region that God has anointed you to, to minister? I pray that as we are in partnership in the ministry, that we will continue to stick together in friendship, in fellowship, and in faith. What the scripture says is impossible to please God without faith. I thank you, Pastor and First Lady, for being a faithful couple, faithful ministers and a missionary to continue to believe God in the midst of the odds. Thank you that you were faithful to serve this congregation. Thank you that you were faithful to honor God and to reverence his presence in worship. Thank you for being a shining example in our faith community. Thank you that you not only represented Christ in church, but you represented Christ at home, on your job, and in your community. Thank you, Pastor, that God has duly anointed you to do a great work. And as the scripture says in Ephesians, the third chapter, verse 20, may he do exceedingly, abundantly more than what you can ask or think, because the great God that we serve is able to bless you beyond your father's imagination. He's already blessed you and your family, but you ain't seen nothing yet. I speak over your life. I speak over your ministry. I speak over your family. I speak over your children. I speak over your seed from your seed and your seed in generations to come that God will continue to bless you and keep you and cover you. As you continue to seek the wisdom of God, as Solomon did, Solomon had wealth. He said, I don't want any more wealth. Only thing I want is the wisdom of God. As you continue to seek the wisdom of God for God's plan for your life, and as he as God told Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, he says, I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper and for you to have good success. I pray that you will have good success, that you will excel, that you and New Horizon Baptist Church will continue to exceed beyond your farthest imagination because you are in yoke in partnership together because of the bond of fellowship that you have as pastor and congregation. Again, you are anointed to preach. The mantle of the preaching anointing is upon you. You have a mandate to preach throughout all seasons. Point number two, there is power in this gospel. Power to save those who are lost. 
power to redeem those who are out, re, outstretched somewhere in the world. God has anointed you to reach them wherever they are with the power of this gospel. And that's what Apostle Paul said in another instance. He said, you know, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it's the power of God unto salvation, unto the Jew first, and then to the Greek. Those who are bound, those who are free. This same gospel is to those who need Jesus Christ. Romans, the first chapter, the 16th verse. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless your family. May the Lord bless your ministry. And may the Lord bless you as you continue to dream. May the Lord just cover you, cover your heart. May the Lord continue to anoint you to serve. And as you, your family, and the New Horizon Church walk this journey of ministry together, I pray that the anointing of God will keep you together, that you will continue to celebrate another year and years to come is my prayer. May the wisdom of the Lord rest in your heart. May the wisdom of God lead and guide you. May the Holy Spirit continue to keep you fresh, revelant, so that the Holy Spirit will reveal the truths of the gospel to you. And as he reveals it to you, you'll be able to proclaim it to the people of God everywhere. God bless you. God anoint you. God prepare you for the days that are coming. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for these vessels of honor. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing that you placed on them. I thank you, Lord, that as I look over the last 35 and plus years, how you've anointed him to minister to so many. I pray that during this anniversary celebration where other ministers and leaders are coming to celebrate them, I pray that they would begin to wax great and appreciate and welcome the gifts that others give as unto them because they rightfully deserve it. Thank you, Lord, for their shining example. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would be all to them that they need you to be. Thank you, Lord, for their service to the Lord's church and to the branch of Zion, New Horizon Baptist Church. And I pray that you would continue to bless them, cover them, anoint them afresh. In Jesus' name we pray. And for those who may not know you in the pardon of their sins, I thank you that this same gospel is still able to reach those who are lost. This same gospel is able to heal those who stand in need of healing. This same gospel is able to deliver them and those who stand in need of deliverance. Thank you, Lord, for your grace that you bestowed upon each one of us. And I pray that uh, someone will get to know you in a part of their sins and receive you as their Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, that you love us all with your everlasting love. Thank you, Lord, that you gave your life as a ransom for all of us, that you paid the ultimate atonement for our sins. Thank you, Lord, that the blood that you shed on Calvary, it was for the remission of our sins. Thank you, Lord, that we are saved. And as we glean from the scriptures, as Apostle Paul wanted us to know that it's important that we receive of you, of your wisdom, of your Holy Spirit, and of your grace. Even now, bless the listeners who are going to listen attentively to the word of God that's going to be shared all throughout this weekend. And I give you praise that souls are going to be saved, people are going to be encouraged, and people are going to be blessed by your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you, lady. God bless you, boys. God bless you, New Horizon Baptist Church. And may the Lord continue to bless you real good. On behalf of my wife, First Lady Evans, my children, Destin and Navia, and the Saints and Grace Community Church, we want to send our love and our contribution and gifts to you as you continue to walk forward in ministry. Be encouraged, my brother, my sister. We love you, and thank you for all that you've done for us over the years. God bless you.